Hello everyone and good afternoon. My name is Dr. Mustafa Mufit Qasim. Today you will get to know the concept of sustainability and resilience of communities and structures and cities to have a better future against natural hazard as recommended by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You know, recently, most of the news are talking about the climate changes as one of the environmental issues and how it is linked to the building sectors in terms of green buildings and the emission of carbon dioxide, CO2, and etc. Today, our topic is focusing on earthquake impact, not on climate change. An earthquake impact on structures and how we can mitigate its impact through developing the fragility assessment. Fragility assessment is a tool to assess the seismic performance to achieve a resilience and sustainable structure against earthquakes movement. Here's the outline. The outline of this lecture consists of five categories or five items. Introduction to earthquakes, fragility seismic assessment, applications and example using finite element platforms, how to develop fragility curves, how to make a building earthquake proof. Introduction to earthquakes. What are earthquakes? Earthquakes can occur anywhere, anytime. Earthquakes is a natural disaster, happen when two blocks of the earth suddenly slip past one to another. The seismic waves are produced when suddenly the energy stored inside the Earth's crust is released. It is, one, it is about storaging of energy and pressure in the Earth's crust, which explode, which release these pressures and this energy to make an earthquake, like here, Northridge earthquake in 1994, which causes death, 57 people, 90,000 injured, and more than $40 billion damages. So earthquake has a direct losses and indirect losses, has economic losses and has, and has human losses. So where do earthquakes start? The starting point of earthquake is below the ground. It's called focus or hypocenter. The area directly above is of the hypocenter is called epicenter. The distance between the epicenter and the site location is called epicentral distance. So the seismic waves propagate in different, in different directions, and the earthquake are strongest at the epicentral zone and become gradually weaker and weaker far further away the epicentral. And the distance between the epicentral and the hypocenter, we call it focal depths. It, the earthquake could be categorized as a shallow earthquake and can be categorized as a deep earthquake. Definition of earthquakes, vibration of the earth produced by the rapid release, seismic waves, these are the seismic birds. The focus is the source of the earthquake. The epicenter is the spot, the spot on the earth's surface directly above the focus point. So what is the concept? The concept is when two boundaries or two blocks of this earth suddenly slip. So this slipping we call appears here a fault place. This is the fault. So we know the fault, okay? So when the force, here we can see there's a friction force. The friction force will, will release a breaking in the boundaries. And this is breaking and the edge of the, of the fault will cause also uh, and structural damages, right? So this is the release of energy from the body wave propagate to the, propagate to the surface waves. So what are the types of earthquakes? The earthquake can be categorized based on the depths, can be categorized based on the epicentral distance and the duration. The depths is shallow, between zero to 70 kilometer, deep between 70 to 700 kilometer, and can be near field and far field, short duration and long duration. And there's another type of earthquake like volcanic earthquake. There's also there's an explosion earthquake, and there's something called tectonic earthquake that we know, and we have also collapse earthquake. Different definitions. The fragility seismic assessment. Okay, this is the, our topic now. This is now the, the, what we need to highlight. 
Buildings are the major structures that are exposed to damage when earthquakes are triggered. This damage can cause losses, including lives and properties. That's true. That's true. Okay, to solve this problem, we need to develop the fragility curve. The fragility curve were introduced by researchers to serve as one of the main tools in assessing damage and loss during earthquake. This is a curve. It's a relation between the probability of collapse and the intensity measure. The fragility curve defined as the probability of reaching or specific damage state so at intensity measure one we have a probability of damage around 0 0.25 which is equal to 25 percent damage so the fragility curve aim is is a prediction of potential damage it is an indication for physical damage it is to help to have a decision making tool before earthquake and after earthquake it also help to reduce the damage cost and lost life, and also help to develop future code standard provisions in the earthquake field. So in order to establish this fragility curve, we need to down, we need to select an appropriate ground motion. Ground motion records plays a main role in establishing fragility curve. The ground motion have several parameters, including magnitude, peak ground acceleration, the epicenter distance, the soil type, and the affected area. The earthquake records can be selected from the certain websites, the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research website or the Cosmos website. In order to download this earthquake, use the peer website. This is step one. Choose the ground motion from peer website. Step two, set ground motion characteristics like fall distance, magnitude, shear wave velocity, etc. Here, the fall type, the magnitude, the distance, the shear wave velocity, and the pulse. And choose a ground motion, either near field or not, or far field, based on the epicentral distance. Then you can download the ground motion record, and the data will be saved in a text file. Insert this ground motion file into the finite element. Okay, this is a text file. This is an example of Flander earthquake in the United States. It has several points, 2,200 points. We have 0 0.02 seconds, the interval between each point. So this happened in 1992. So this is all the database you need to use in your simulation process. In simulation process, the fragility curve can be developed using analytical technique, using nonlinear dynamic analysis. The nonlinear dynamic analysis or the time history analysis is a step-by-step -step analysis of dynamic response of a structure to specified loading that may vary with time. So we have variation of time and we have variation of acceleration. At each acceleration, we have variation of displacement. The structure will have different displacement. So nonlinear relation hold between the applied forces, this acceleration and the displacement. So the nonlinear dynamic analysis generate incremental dynamic analysis curve, IDA curve. And there's also nonlinear static analysis generate push over analysis curve. We prefer to go to the incremental dynamic analysis because it is based on ground motions, real ground motion. It is based on multi degree of freedom, multi displacement. However, the push over analysis or static analysis based on single degree of freedom, single displacement. So the incremental dynamic analysis uh, depend on two significant parameters intensity measure and the damage measure. The intensity measure is a PGA. The damage measure is selected as interstory drift ratio. So the incremental analysis can be performed by using ground motion data by increasing, incrementally increasing the intensity. Well, that's why I call it incremental, incrementally increasing the intensity to the point of collapse and stop. So we have the analysis. The performance-based seismic design. Okay, we know that we get the ground motion. We get the ground motion. How can I know? How can I measure the damage of the structure? There's five categories in the performance by seismic design. The five categories are operational phase, immediate occupancy, damage control, life safety, and collapse prevention. Each phase, each damage stage has its own percentage drift. The OP have 0.5 drift. The IO have 1% drift. The damage control 1.5% drift the life safety 2% drift, the collapse prevention has 2.5% drift. So each damage state has its own percentage drift ratio. So an example, an example. An example 
of input and output of fragility. We insert the ground motion. We did the simulation. We get the output, the probability of damage. Okay. We have a 2D model of RC frame system with the beam size 40 pounds 40, column size 30, 40, with material 30 megapascal of concrete. The boundary condition is fixed support. Great. After we model the frame, it is necessary to check the capability of the structure according to the gravity load, that load and light load, to make sure that the design capacity is safe. Okay, it is safe. Okay. When you design the structure based on gravitational loading, you need to assess the seismic performance of the structure in order to know the failure mechanism. Here we failure mechanism. We have the soft touring failure mechanism. And to know the location of damage in columns or beams. So because... The concept of plastic hinges is important. Here's the plastic hinges. Here's the input of ground motion. We have the drift. We have displacement at intensity dimension 3.1G, 0.2G for ground motion one and ground motion two and ground motion three. We get all the plastifications of the columns. The plastification happens in the columns, which, which, may, which means that the, the story have a failure, weak failure mechanism, which means that the vertical element uh, to resist earthquake are insufficient for seismic design. So we need to design the structure again for uh, earthquake movements. How to calculate the drift? You are asking me how to, uh, to calculate the drift, okay? I will show you. Okay, we have displacement, 0.15 meter, and total height, 9 meter. So 0.15 divided by 9, We'll get 1.6 percent. So this is the way. Okay, great. So we will continue. So we will continue that we know that the plastic hinges occurred here. We know that the ground motion. Uh, we insert the ground motion. The displacement occurs. So we develop the idea curve, which is the relation between the PJ and the interstellar drift ratio at the collapse stage. 0.52 g. Here's 0.1 g damage, and here's 0.05 g. How to develop the fragility curve? To develop the fragility curve, you should know, you should extract the data. You should extract the data from the ground motion. You should extract the data from the ground motion, minimum three records. Uh, we should uh, calculate the mean and the standard deviation from each damage state. Use fragility equation below to develop the fragility. This is the fragility equations. Okay, let's go to, I will share with you the Excel sheet that we prepared for, uh, to show the uh, the fragility curve development okay here we can see the ground motion one two three extracted from the ida curve for each ground motion an interpolation happened here between the interstory drift and the pga we calculate the mean and the standard deviation for each dummy state then we apply the normal distribution function for each dummy state to develop the fragility curve Mean, standard deviation, and, and the standard deviation and the community distribution function to develop the fragility curve for the five state OP, IO, DC, LC, LS, and CP. If we go back again to our slides, go back again to our slide. Okay, so we have here the fragility curves which is shown that at 0.18 G, the structure is collapsed, 50% of the damage is collapsed, and with 20% can be operated because the possibility of damage at OP stage is 80%. So here's 80%, so 20% is can be operated. So here's 80% damage, here's 50% damage. The total, the total collapse is need around 0.5 G, so the structure will collapse. So how we can improve this one? We can improve this one by applying a flexible foundation based isolation system. We can apply tune mass damper. We can apply the damping devices. We can apply the enforcing or the basing system or diaphragm system or shear wall system to improve the structural behavior. Here's some modeling example using finite element. We have the earthquake movement. We have the RC frame without any innovations. We have a damper, we have a bracing, we have a tuned mass damper. We have a shear wall. The displacement is reducing from six to eight until seven millimeter. So we, the structure is improved. Here you can see the behavior during earthquake for the RC frame, for the damper system. You can see here 
for the bracing, for the shear wall system. You can see the behavior of the tune mass damper and the base isolation. The tune mass damper sees the mass here is absorbing the earthquake energy, and the base isolation without any deformation is moving, uh, moving the structure only. 